national debt enslavement. And finally, Title 22, United States Code, Foreign Relations and Intercourse, Chapter 1, identifies all public officials as foreign agents. And as Kelby said, the United States is a foreign country. They're foreign to who we are, and now we have re-inhabited the original republic, and we are reestablishing the law and the capacity and standing of the people in republic on the land and reestablishing our sovereign rights, authority, and capacity. And we invite you to educate yourself on all of this and to make that choice if you want to begin to rebuild a true sovereign state with, um, uh, with all of the protections that are available within the republic for yourself and your children. So thank you for your time, and I yield the floor. Ken, wow. That was pretty incredible. I appreciate uh, your knowledge. I really do. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I see our Vice President uh, Charles Wright has joined us on the call. Um, I was recently going to open the call to him for uh, announcements and an update. Uh, Mr. Vice President, do you have the time to do that right now, sir? You bet. How is everybody doing tonight there, Kelly? I hope everyone is well, and it's great to be on the call tonight. And I just wanted to uh, touch base on the project I've been working on lately, many of you might know about, and that's the uh, Sunday night uh, call regarding the training of the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. The last two calls have been actually preparation and setting up to that training this Sunday. And this we're taking the same spot that the uh, our president has his fireside chat. You will use the, uh, I believe you used the phone number and, and the code that you called in tonight for this call, 6 p.m. PST time, Pacific time, on Sunday. We will have a uh, complete reading of the Declaration of Independence, and we will start discussing each component at that time. Uh, last week we discussed how their Declaration of Independence is made up of five uh, key elements, uh, being the uh, preamble, the introduction. Uh, the body of the uh, declaration is really divided in two parts, and then there's a conclusion to it. And we'll be discussing each one of those uh, uh, pieces that make up the declaration. Uh, we have uh, done a little bit of history. If you haven't heard the calls, I urge you to uh, go back and listen to the last two calls. I believe they are listed on the website. There's also a place on the website for you to list your comments. Uh, I believe it's like a little blog or blog, isn't that correct, Kelby? And uh, I, so you can post your comments and even trade uh, 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 information yourself. I've uh, asked for a response uh, directly to me for those who like to participate with me on the weekly calls. We've had uh, some good response. I will be calling you. Make sure you include your phone number so I can call you and talk to you about the participation during the call. And I'm looking forward to hearing you and seeing you all on Sunday. And we'll be continuing the series on the Declaration of Independence and then on into the Constitution itself. Well, Kelby, I want to thank you for the opportunity for letting us uh, share that with everybody tonight. I hope everything is going well with everyone out there in the Republic, and uh, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming to the call. Ladies and gentlemen, normally we don't let these calls run longer than uh, an hour. What we're going to do right now is take a couple of minutes, um, and uh, anybody that wants to join in, please, uh, on how we re inhabit it. Um, really, next week we're going to get into an exciting conversation about what happened, the moments, where it happened. Um, but here, here's the gist of it. Uh, as we learned this rabbit trail, this hole, and how deep the hole went, we realized we had an opportunity as a people to sit back down in those seats of 1861 that were vacated by the last Congress that ever held Congress. And so what I want to do is encourage people that are listening tonight to understand Thousands of people across this country, this isn't two or three people, thousands of people have gotten together, they formed their journal assemblies, they signed on a document, they issued notice of this document to the governors, which gave the governors an opportunity, meaning the de facto governors, Arnold Schwarzenegger in California, gave them an opportunity to do what the people have asked. No 
those governors didn't know what to do because they lived in de facto. They obviously said no. When they did that, that allowed us by right to stand up and elect our own governor in republic, elect our own secretary of state, elect our own senators, congressmen, our own judges, and so on and so forth. In the Republic of California, I'm going to guess we have close to a thousand members. We are just getting started. These are people that are active in the Republic. These are these are not just people that have signed up. These are people that are coming to meetings, participating in assemblies around the state, and it's happening all across this country. Those assemblies voted for their legislative body, their senators and their representatives. Those senators and representatives in November of 2010 took a journey of faith under God and went to Utah. And within Utah, we sat back down in those seats. They were a different color. It was in a different building. But the de jure Republic for the United States of America Congress sat back down in the seats vacated in 1861. They formed what's called the Declaration of Sovereign Intent. They gave their own law within the book, meaning their operating document. And from that point forward, it was done. Constructive notice now started to go out to all the different countries that we had relationships with, to the uh, specific people within the de facto government to advise them that we were on the land. Now, what is encouraging is there isn't anything that we have done that is not by right nor unlawful. What we have done is completely above reproach. It is exciting to say that I am actually a part of it. It's exciting to know that there's thousands of people that are coming in on a monthly basis saying, I want to be a part of that too. So ladies and gentlemen, please let your friends and family hear this. Hear this last hour of a message. Let them understand and start deciding for themselves what the truth is. This is a hard pill to swallow. But once you live in truth and you know that there is a remedy, and you don't have to try to fix a $250 trillion unfunded liabilities in the de facto government, which, by the way, according to the Congressional Budget Office in 2010, which is why Ken Cousins just said that it's a dog and pony show. They're doing this dog and pony show regarding the debt ceiling, needing to be raised by August 2nd. Here's the reality check. We're $250 trillion in debt, unfunded liabilities, Social Security, Medicare, Medi-Cal, veterans payments. It's not $15 trillion, ladies and gentlemen. It's a horrible number. And they're doing it on purpose. They're doing it with motive. And they're fleecing the flock. And the bottom line is this. The collateral is you, the people, the 14th Amendment citizens. That's what they did to you in 1933. You became the collateral along with the land and the gold to this corporation's debt. So I can only imagine what they're going to do with the people that are the collateral for the corporation. With that, I'd like to end the call this evening. We want to thank you for coming on the call. We very much look forward to you joining us tomorrow night uh, at the Republic Roundtable. And uh, I know, Robert, you're on the call. Would you please close us out in prayer? Sure, Wade. Love to. You know, you uh, started off with the Star Spangled Banner and giving tribute to the soldiers. I uh, had the opportunity tonight to uh, meet a soldier who is one of the uh, Third Army Infantry, apparently from the same lineage of George Washington. And um, he was is one of the honor guard or was one of the honor guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And it gave me such a... Uh, such a well up in my chest of uh, of gratitude for his service, but the I don't know if people know about that particular office, but you have to stay very pure in your person, in your thoughts, in your manner, in every part. It's a very very sacred trust to uh, uh, guard the tomb of the unknown soldier, and uh, soldiers really have to lay it down to want to serve in that capacity. So, Heavenly Fathers, we come before you tonight. Wow, what a wonderful expose. What a wonderful delivery by uh, 
by Kelby and uh, by Ken. Lord, we just thank you that uh, you are unraveling, uh, revealing your truth, uh, helping us build precept upon precept, understanding upon understanding of how we've been hoodwinked, how we've been uh, lied to, and how we have, uh, as was said on this call, be uh, uh, distracted by a dog and pony show. So, Lord, I just pray uh, that you bless those who are on this call, bless their families, uh, bless their livelihood, and bless their homes. Protect them, Lord. You promise your people that you will hide us in the cleft of a rock. You uh, promise us, Lord, that you will send provision in front of us. Lord, you uh, have promised the meek shall inherit the earth. Oh, Lord, we, uh, we come before you, humbled that you would use us as your instruments to uh, fulfill your work. We thank you. Our best days are yet ahead of us in these United States of America. And we thank you, Lord, that we are reclaiming our country one stone, one heart at a time. Come, Lord Jesus, have your way in our hearts this week. We pray the Holy Spirit descend upon all of those who have eyes to see and ears to hear to have the courage to make, take the next step to come out and be chosen. As you say, Lord, in a select people, elect unto you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time together. May all glory go to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.